Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this week's Scan Pro Audio webcast. Uh, we're very happy to have with us this week the uh, adorable Mr. Jonathan Burrows, uh, who's going to be uh, running uh, what turns out to be a, a very popular uh, subject. He's going to be doing a road webcast, and he has a very special guest with him. Uh, but I'll let him introduce him in a little while. Uh, Suffice to say, every week we have some special offers, and uh, this week's no exception. Uh, what you need to do is listen out for the special uh, code word, and at the end of the show, uh, we'll make sure that you know what that is. But uh, if you then email us at scanproaudio at scan.co.uk and tell us what the code word is, we'll email you back with some uh, favorable pricing, I think is the term. But for now, we're going to run some titles, and when we come back, you'll have Jonathan all to yourselves. Good evening and welcome to the Rode uh, webcast in conjunction with SCAN tonight. It's lovely to have you with us. Um, my name's Jonathan. I work for Rode here in the UK. Um, my background is audio, hence I'm surrounded by mics and I hopefully shed some light on some of the options for Rode recording um, audio for video uh, use tonight. Um, we also have with us uh, a very special guest tonight, the multi-award winning uh, photojournalist and uh, filmmaker Edmund Terracopian. Good evening, Edmund. Are you with us? I am indeed. Good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having us. So, what uh, the, our, our format for tonight is basically I can uh, go through some of the, the different families of mics that are appropriate for recording audio for video. Um, I'm not a filmmaker as such, so Edmund is here as, as the professional expert. So I'll tell you a little bit about the mics in, in short term, and then Edmund can tell you how he uses them and how he uses them in the field and, and what he likes about them and what have you. So um, if that's all right with you, Edmund, I'll, I'll just give a bit of background on road to start with. Um, what makes road different? There's a lot of mic manufacturers out there. Um, Rode is different because they, like a lot of people, have a design office um, and they come up with some great designs. Um, but for the last 20 years, uh, the difference is that they keep all the manufacture in that same office. So everything is made in Australia, in Sydney. Um, and instead of an office designing something and then sending plans over to China to have it made there, which is quite often the case, uh, Rode choose to keep the quality uh, control directly to themselves. They, mind, they invest heavily in uh, manufacturing equipment and highly automate things so that the manufacture of microphones, when you buy one microphone, you can make a thousand and one thousand down the line is going to sound exactly the same. Um, that's what you need from microphones. You don't want any variation in sound. You want to get one microphone and another one will sound exactly the same. You don't want any variation in the tone and what have you on, different, on the same mic. Um, so that um, precision uh, in the manufacture um, enables Rode to give uh, a 10-year warranty on most of its products. Most of the things I'll show you here tonight uh, have a 10-year warranty, and that's because it's made so well to start with. Uh, not only is it a great product and it'll give you great sound, but there's a 10-year warranty back to back that up in case you do have any problems as well. Okay, so... What I'm going to do is just run through some of the families of mics. Some of you will have uh, different uh, cameras that you use, um, and maybe it's something that you can put questions to Edmund. So we're inviting question, questions in the chat room all evening, either for myself from a technical point of view or for Edmund there to uh, kind of give a real-world kind of experience. So we're going to break things down, um, and we're going to talk about different families of mics and how you might use them. Um, First of all, Edmund, I'll come to you for a second. Um, a lot of cameras now have their own inbuilt mics, and a lot of people, that's what they use. How important is it to you for, for an audio side to use something separate um, in terms of microphones? 
I think as as a visual person, uh, primarily photographers are obviously visual. You know, my background is photography. Filmmaking came much, much later. Uh, initially, we don't really appreciate the, the, the real importance of audio because we think it's all in a picture and great composition and great action and movement and, uh, and sort of storytelling, yeah. uh, which obviously is important. Um, but we just don't appreciate how important audio is. And the second you speak to anyone in proper filmmaking and cinematography and so on uh, and you sort of start to hear words uh, you know phrases like audio is 50 percent audio 60 percent of the finished product that you sort of start questioning why it is so and it really is if you have even the best footage the best action wonderfully shot beautifully edited and graded and you have bad audio it degrades from the finish uh, the final piece so much that it yeah. becomes un unviewable. Um, also, another thing with audio is as expressive as, as a visual is, audio is as expressive. So when you're trying to tell a story, be that a photojournalistic story or be that a, a sort of a short creative film, uh, you actually have two massive tools at, uh, at, at your disposal. One is very strong visuals, but the other is very, very strong audio. And if you combine those two, if you try and begin to learn, understand, explore, and master those, uh, those two disciplines, it then makes you a much, much better filmmaker uh, because you have double the impact of someone who doesn't understand one or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, uh, going back to uh, the other part of your question, the built-in microphones are useful up to a point. Um, they're sort of very, uh, they have a very sort of, if we if we talk in photographic terms, a very sort of wide angle of coverage. So you know they'll sort of uh, they'll have an ex acceptance area which is very wide and take all sorts of noises and sounds and sort of put them down on uh, onto the compact flash or SD card. But they also record things like every camera click, movement, scratch, focusing sound that uh, that the camera makes. And the other thing is uh, they are on the camera. They're built into the camera, which means they are far away from your subject. So unless you're shooting your subject this closely, mm -hmm. you're not going to get good audio because the microphone's so far away. And all of that's not taking into, into account the actual quality of the microphone itself. Um, you know, it's a very cheap kind of microphone. The size that they have to be shrunk to means, means that they're not great. Sure. Uh, whereas, you know, if you choose a proper microphone, um, and there's various kinds which we're, we're going to discuss uh, as, as this webinar goes on. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a much better quality of sound because the microphone's better. You're going to get a much better quality of sound because you can move that microphone and have it closer to your subject if, if it suits the kind of sound that you're trying to record. Uh, and, you know, 99 times out of 100, getting closer is, is the crux. Uh, Robert Kappa once said, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. And the same ethos uh, for me in my experience is very true with audio. Almost all of the time you need to get your microphone as close as you can to, to get the best sound. You know, there's, there's some very sure. rare exceptions, but they really are extremely rare exceptions. Um, so yeah, audio is, audio is key. It's very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, the first group of microphones uh, that we're going to talk about tonight is a shotgun microphone. So it might look very familiar if some of you have used them before. Um, they're very often seen on film sets uh, and they're quite uh, commonplace and this is, this is what we use. So this, um, I'll explain how a shotgun microphone works. As like a camera, you're facing uh, a certain position, that's where you're picking the image up. That's exactly what a shotgun microphone is doing for audio. Um, it picks up sound at the front and that travels down the tube and actually the, um, the diaphragm which collects the sound is actually somewhere down here in the microphone. Now what that means is any sound coming direct from, from where you're pointing it travels straight down the tube and straight to the, uh, straight to the diaphragm. So it collects that sound and it, it passes it off to the mixer or to the camera or whatever you're recording on. If things are coming in from the side, if sounds coming in from the side it actually goes into the side of the microphone through the grill, I'll try and show you on the close-up there, um, and bounces around and the energy within the sound wave actually uh, disappears before it gets to the diaphragm at the bottom. So what it's doing is collecting sound from the front um, and actually rejecting everything from the back and the sides so you're literally just getting an audio from where you're positioning the mic. 
Uh, that's called a super cardioid uh, directional. It's a polar pattern, so it's it's just picking up from the front. Um, so this this microphone is the the NTG1, extremely popular microphone. Um, again, uh, as I said, it's a shotgun microphone. Um, you've got a little switch on there, um, and that's a high pass filter. And most of the things we have will have a, a high pass filter on there. Um, if in case uh, you don't know what a high pass filter is. Um, it allows the higher frequencies to pass through and be recorded, and anything below about 80 hertz, it just cuts off. Um, so basically, um, if you're in a room where there's maybe some uh, air conditioning, or you're in a, a, a room where there's maybe footsteps up top, that's going to cut off uh, all of that kind of really low kind of rumble before it's actually recorded, and that's going to save you time later in editing. So, um, so that's the, the NTG1. The next, um, the next microphone is the NTG2, and basically that's the same microphone, and the only difference is that ha that has a battery compartment in. Now all of these uh, microphones are condenser microphones, which means they take a power supply through the mic cable to the XLR cable on the back there, uh, from either your mixer or your camera, and it cable kind of goes in there, and it, it takes a power supply from that to power the mic. Just in case you don't know what camera you're going to be using, just in case you don't know what mixer you're going to be feeding into, um, this has a battery compartment, so you know you're safe with everything. So for that reason, the NTG2 uh, is, is kind of one of the most popular microphones we do for this purpose. Again, it's got the high-pass filter on there if you wish to use it. Um, the next uh, mic in the range um, is the NTG3. Now, um, this actually... Um, uses a different technique for actually collecting the sound. The, the feature of the shotgun works exactly the same, um, and, and in that technique it, it collects the sound the same, but the, the technology inside actually works differently. That means that it's extremely uh, low noise itself, so if you needed to record something very, very quiet, and you're needing to turn the gain up on your mixer or your camera, um, you're not going to get any hiss from this microphone. Um, generally, with any bit of electronics, as soon as you start turning the levels up, um, you're going to get some hiss. And this is specifically designed so you can do that, so you can record something very, very quietly or very far away and not get any hiss. The other um, advantage of the, the RF bias technology in it is that it's uh, resistant to moisture. So if you're doing a lot of outside work, um, this is perfect because moisture is not going to affect it. If you're in... Uh, you know, the snow and the ice, the moisture is not going to do it, damage it, the cold is not going to uh, affect it. Equally, if you're in the middle of a desert, you know, the heat is not going to affect it either. So that's the NTG3, um, very highly regarded as a professional microphone. Um, the next uh, mic in the group is this one here. Um, and this is uh, an NTG8. Exactly the same technology inside as the NTG3, as we've just discussed. Um, but this is a longer uh, barrel. Again, the diaphragm is down here at the bottom. Basically what that means, the longer the barrel, it's not that it's going to pick sound up from further away than any others, but it's going to be more specific over a longer area. Sound has to be coming more or less straight in uh, to get to the, uh, to the capsule at the bottom. And anything from the side or the back is just going to be rejected. So it's a very, very specific microphone in terms of direction. Um, Edmund, I'm, I'm going to come on to the accessories in a second, but um, I, I presume you use shotgun microphones quite a lot in, in what you do. Uh, absolutely. The, the majority of the microphones I use are, are, are the shotgun mics. Um, just, uh, just to add to what you were saying about the NTG3 and uh, mm. about how resistant it is, one of my colleagues has taken his to Afghanistan for four years on the trot, uh, sort of in the middle of combat zones and... Uh, you know, covering all sorts of uh, combat missions for, for Al Jazeera and Channel 4 and stuff, and uh, not had a single issue with, with his NTG3. Right. So Excellent. that's, uh, you know, if ever a testament was needed for uh, <laughs> uh, not only quality, but uh, something that's built rugged and built to last, you know, I think that kind of uh, illustrates the point, uh, the point really well. Yeah. Um, I personally, that's my favorite microphone as well, the NTG3. Uh, I have an NTG2 as well, which yeah. uh, was my first XLR shotgun microphone. Uh, which I use extensively, and having the battery in there helps a lot. Depending on uh, what you're using, you can self-power it or have it draw phantom power from uh, from the recording unit. 
um, or uh, or the sort of recording interface which you use, which, I'm, which I'll show later on. Mm. Uh, but uh, by far my favorite is the NTG3. The, the sound I was getting from the two was amazing. I was more than ecstatic with it. Sure. Uh, and then I tried the NTG3 and it just blew me away. So um, again, it's like, you know, in photographic terms, you know, you, you get a great zoom lens and it's fantastic. And then you get a great prime lens and it blows your socks off because yeah. it's so much better. And that's, uh, it's, it's definitely worth listening to these things. For anyone sort of new to, to, to filmmaking uh, and, and video who's from a photographic background, it's, it's a really fascinating journey because you start to realize the differences, the subtleties, the gains that you get and how you can sort of sculpt the sound to the, to the way you want it. It's exactly like twiddling with exposure and composition and stuff and sure. uh, yeah. sort of crafting, uh, crafting what you're doing. Absolutely. Great, great. Okay, thank you. Um, so... Um, Obviously, these microphones, um, you don't want to be holding them in your hand because that's going to get noise. And exactly as Edmund says before, you need to get close to the subject that you're trying to catch with the audio from. So I've just got some of the accessories that, that match with those mics. Um, so it might be um, that you do actually want to connect one of these mics to your camera. So in such a case, you can have such accessories like that. So there's, uh, depending on what kind of camera you've got or where you want to put it, there's lots of, um, uh, of different accessories which you can always put the mic into. Now, there's a general theme with everything here that if, if you can see there in the middle, the mic is actually floating uh, on bands on a shock mount there. Um, a couple of reasons for that. One, you don't want the mic to get knocked um, because anything touching it, uh, a solid surface, is, is going to translate into a sound. Um, and the other is throughout the whole system um, of the, the sound process. Any kind of sound coming up from the floor, through anything, through yourself, through your body, uh, or on a mic stand, that's going to go into the microphone and that could affect your sound. So the whole idea of these bands and the shock mounts that I'll show you shortly is to decouple the microphone from what's holding it so that it is effectively floating in midair. Um, so that, that the sound doesn't translate from anywhere you don't want it. So that, that's one option. So that, that will go straight into the camera. Um, we have other options where um, similar kind of thing. I'll show you a close-up of that. Um, and that will go into uh, um, either a mic stand or a boom pole, which we have here. So you, you, might, uh, you might see that attached on there like so. Um, the next kind of step up it is maybe um, to go for something um, like this, which um, is a pistol grip. Um, so this is something where maybe you're um, doing an interview and you need to move the, the mic around. Or maybe it's something where you have someone separate doing the audio uh, and they can position and direction the mic as is. So um, basically if I take an NTG2, Again, this is all rubber, so the idea is that, uh, that that's kind of floating and there's nothing solid there. And that can just push through there. It's always quite firm because you don't want the microphone moving around. You then hold in the pistol grip. The cable goes through the handle and goes into the back there. So everything's nice and secure and it's not going to uh, knock around at all. Just get that into there, like so. So that might start looking familiar now um, as, a, as a kind of a whole package. The next stage to do, uh, that's all right for indoor use, but maybe when you go outdoor, you, there's always going to be some, some weather, especially here in the UK. Um, so with the microphone, it always comes with um, a foam windshield as well. And that's going to protect the microphone from any, any wind, um, maybe a little bit of moisture, um, so you don't get that kind of blowing sound on the mic. You can always hear maybe journalists really struggling in the wind. Uh, if they don't have something like this on, then you just wouldn't hear the journalists at all. You would just hear wind. The next uh, stage from that is to add some more protection. So um, this is a furry windshield, uh, and that basically goes on the top and gives an extra layer of protection. So if you're doing a lot of outside work, it's really worth investing in a little bit more protection. And you'll see um, journalists kind of use this, you know, and they'll be talking to the people who they want to respond from and using it themselves. And, and that's, as I say, it's all a professional piece of kit. This uh, item here is called a dead cat. Um, for any animal rights people out there, it's not actually made from cat. It's just synthetic. So hopefully we haven't upset anyone there. Um, the next stage, the next accessory, if you need kind of both of those options all the time, 
is to maybe go for a deluxe windshield. And basically, uh, this is has the foam inside, a tight uh, rubber grip there, and it's got the, the furry part on the outside. So that just slides on in one go. And again, maybe you haven't used them before, but that'll look very familiar to you from, uh, from television and, and film. Um, on the, the handle, as I say, the cable um, comes out of the bottom there. And that will also, again, screw onto the top of a, a boom pole uh, or a mic stand if you want it to be static um, to give you that flexibility to get extra reach uh, to exactly where you need to be. Um, now, going a stage further, again, this will probably look very familiar, even if you haven't used one before. Um, from um, this level, from the, uh, the deluxe windshield, if you're in really kind of bad weather and you're filming outside all the time, it could be that the, the, the wind is hitting the back of the microphone and giving you a little bit of noise that way. So to solve, this is called the road blimp. Um, the furry side of it is called the a dead wombat. And basically, I can show you this by taking this off. That's the furry cover there. And then again, that probably looks familiar. What happens, you take that off from both sides. And in the middle there, if we do a close-up for that, um, you'll see that the microphone is suspended in the center there, uh, again on windshield, uh, on uh, shock mount, so the mic is not actually touching anything solid, and that just protects the mic all around. So you've got the front and the back on there. The cable actually just goes up through a little hole, connects into there. Again, the cable runs down the, um, the handle, and your mic connector is just there, ready for your cable. Um, so again, if you're in a lot of extreme weather, um, or you just don't know where you're going to be that day, the blimp is always a really useful tool uh, to take with it wherever you're going. Okay. Um, do you use any windshields or any accessories yourself, Edmund? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, every time I use a mic, at minimum, I have the, the foam on, even mm -hmm. indoors, because uh, even that sort of movement of a microphone, you know, on a yeah. boom pole or in a pistol grip, even that movement without any wind in the room can create sound. Mm -hmm. uh, so the foam is always on there because it, uh, it just, you know, it stops you from from getting stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And if I'm outdoors, I definitely have uh, have have a dead cat on there right. um, because it's it's crucial, absolutely, absolutely necessary. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, Great. Well, that's, that's, the, um, that's the shotgun family of microphones and some of the accessories that go with that. Um, now, the next family of microphones we're, we're going to talk about are, were specifically designed for DSLR cameras and maybe smaller camcorders. Um, the, uh, the facility to do HD video uh, on cameras has become um, very common recently. And as um, Edmund said, the the problem with an inbuilt microphone on a camera is it's it's that and as we've talked about with shock mounts it's embedded into the uh, the camera so any button clicks any lenses moving anything like that even just you breathing straight behind it can collect noise because it's collecting noise from everywhere so the camera is looking in front of you um, but actually it's collecting noise from anywhere so the first mic uh, specifically for this use is called the, the video mic. Now this has had a, a recent update, so it's now got a Rycote shock mount. And you see that's, that's again, that's floating around on top there um, so that you don't get any knocks or, or bangs. And it's decoupling it from the camera itself. Um, you can see uh, in addition to um, being uh, directly connected to the camera so that's a, a little mini jack there it's actually more in proportion with the camera than some of the other microphones so if you are um, literally wanting to collect sound from wherever you're looking the video mic is more in proportion with the camera to carry around same again you can also um, put the mic onto a, a grip like that so you can have it separately and extend the cable um, but a lot of people you'll see like this especially photojournalists to, to do this um, again, it's a shotgun microphone, so under the phone there, it's exactly the same kind of format as the others we've discussed. Um, on the back, if we can get a little video closer with that, there's, um, there's a 9 volt battery in there which powers the microphone, so again, you're not relying on the camera or anything else to power the microphone. There's a 9 volt battery in there. Battery life is, is up to about 80 hours, so there's nothing to worry about, and you're going to run out if you take a fresh battery with you. Um, so the switch on the back actually turns it on. You can get a green light there. 
and again you've got a high pass filter on there so that might just get rid of some of the the general rumble from the out outdoors as a gay road noise um, or air conditioning kind of noise on that kind of sense um, so that is the video mic R uh, and they, they sell for around 80 pounds uh, still excellent quality um, and a very very versatile mic the the next stage uh, up from that is the um, the video mic pro so as you can see as as cameras um, have got smaller uh, over the last few years um, even the video mic was was sometimes too large for um, the uh, for some cameras and you don't want things getting in the way of the the lens so the video mic pro um, was developed and again you can see that it's on its own shot mount so it's just suspended in midair there um, again shotgun microphone and on the back, there's, there's a couple of, uh, well, there's one major difference. Um, you've got an on switch, and you've got the high-pass filter as normal. And then at the bottom here, you have the facility to not only reduce the level. So on the video mic, you can actually, you've got a pad. So if, you, for example, you're, um, you're at an airport and you're filming airplanes taking off, it's extremely loud, and that actually might be too loud for any microphone. So on the video mic that we've just done, you can actually reduce the sound by 10 or 20 dB. Um, you can do the same, you can reduce it by 10 dB on the, uh, the video mic pro, but actually crucially on the video mic pro, you can increase the level that you're getting as well. So if you're doing an interview, maybe somewhere very quiet, um, you need to turn the level up on, on the camera. You need to turn the gain up on the camera to actually get the level that you want to hear. Now, the problem with cameras is because they, the, the preamps are so small and, and they're trying to save space on the camera, um, when you turn that gain up, you actually get a lot of hiss at the time and it actually degrades the sound quality. So on the Video Mic Pro, you can actually boost the level on the mic so that on the camera you can turn the level right down and you get a much, much clearer signal with much less hiss. So that is the Video Mic Pro. Um, a new addition to the, um, to the shotgun uh, video mic range is the Video Mic Go. So again, uh, you've got your shoe connector there on the bottom. On all of them, you've got a 3 8 connector as well, so you can put them onto a boom pole or a mic stand. Again, Rycount uh, shock mount, very, very strong, very, very flexible there. This uh, microphone doesn't actually need a battery, so this just plugs straight into your camera and is ready to go straight away. Um, and that um, is £65. So they're, they're a very, very cost-effective way of getting into video and a great quality and so light. And as you can see, if I compare it with the other one, quite a bit smaller than the video mic. So it's very, very flexible if you're doing a lot, a lot of movement. Um, Edmund, I'm going to come on to stereo video mics in a second. Um, but again, just wanted to see if you used the video mic as is and, and you used that with DSLR cameras at all. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I first got into uh, exploring video on, uh, on a DSLR, uh, first one being a Canon 5D Mark II, uh, the Rode video mic was the very first microphone I used. And uh, very quickly I realized what, uh, you know, how great a sound it was giving me. Mm. Um, one crucial, ex well, two crucial accessories I found really, really helped was uh, Rode do a shielded extension lead. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just a lead with a coil on one end, you just plug the video mic in on the lead at one end, plug the other end of the lead into the camera. And it meant that I could then put the microphone on a boom pole, which is basically like a monopod, and yeah. get the microphone really sort of close in uh, sure. to, to where the sound was coming from, you know, a bit of dialogue or ambient sound footsteps and so on. And uh, if, uh, if, if you folks look up my very first video, which is called Muse, uh, it's on my Vimeo channel, so if you just Google me and Google Muse, you'll, you'll find it. Uh, you can see the kind of sounds that I was already getting uh, from never having done video or audio to, uh, to using a video mic. Um, and that, that just opened my eyes. That was the first step. Um, and from there, I then went up to the uh, Rode NTG2, which was the XLR mic uh, sure. that we had a look at a little bit earlier. And... Uh, at first, I was using a box called a Beach Tech box, which is uh, similar to this. This is actually uh, made by a company called Juiced Link. Um, and what this basically does is you sort of screw this under, under your DSLR or on top of it, and it allows you to plug in XLR. I don't know if you can see the XLR sockets there, mics into that. And that's, you know, it was, I was using a similar unit to this. Um, 
to sort of get the sound in. I then discovered Juice Link, which gives a slightly better sound. Mm -hmm. And that, again, took the audio to the next level. Then after the NTG2, I discovered the NTG3, which again then took the audio to, to a further level still. Sure. Um, but it all began with, with a video mic. Uh, and now with the Video Mic Pro, it's even better. It's a smaller microphone. It sounds. I've done extensive side-by-side -side, uh, testing, and it sounds. It actually sounds better than a bit of, uh, than the bigger mic. Um, and as you say, it's crucially, it's got a built-in uh, sort of gain amplifier. As you say, it's, it's got much sure. better pre-mic um, uh, preamps for the microphone than any DSLR has built in. Yeah. So any kind of quiet moment. In fact, I always have it at, at, at the plus dB setting, apart from, you know, if, if one was going to record anything mega loud, like your example was perfect, uh, planes taking off at an airport, uh, sure. you just leave it in there because it means that the camera pre-mic doesn't have to work hard at all. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you don't introduce a, a sort of a, any extra sort of hiss or a, any extra noise uh, if you're recording straight on straight onto the camera. Sure. I think what uh, what might be great is just to go through some slides which illustrate all the microphones we've been talking about mm -hmm. up to this point. Yeah. Um, I think Tom, uh, Tom's Tom got uh, the slides there. So Tom, if uh, perhaps if you put up, um, put up the first slide, um, and I can't see the slides in real time, so are they up yet? And the then I can first one's just come up, yes, yes. Right, so... Um, the, the first slide and the second slide. Uh, Velocity you know, slide 2014. Well, the UK-based uh, media creators and innovation in uh, Whitehall on a 5D Mark II uh, and with a video mic. Uh, as you can see, it's got the Dead Cat wind jammer on there, uh, so uh, it's sort of you know helping cut out any kind of wind noise. Um, so this is you know this is journalism in action with the DSLR and uh, and the video mic. Uh, next slide, please, Tom. So the next slide uh, shows my progression. This is now my 5D Mark II, but I've now moved up to the uh, NTG2. And as you can see, it's plugged into the Beach Tech uh, underneath the camera, which basically takes in the XLR. It's got a uh, pre-mic in there. It also, takes a, it also has a battery, which means if you need to feed up phantom power uh, yeah. to your microphone, you can do. Uh, and then from the box, it's got a mini jack lead that then plugs straight into straight into the side of the camera. Uh, if we move on to the next slide, please, Tom. There we go. This is a, a short film which uh, which was commissioned by Olympus several years ago using the, their pen cameras, and uh, we were shooting in this sort of uh, old, dilapidated uh, mansion. And that's uh, again, that's the video mic in action with its. Uh, that cat on there just to take away the wind and uh, and that worked really well. Uh, that film's called Homage, so if anyone wants to look that up, um, you can really hear what uh, what that microphone's capable of. There's a musical scene in the middle. I won't say what it is because I don't want to I don't want to give away the plot, but uh, definitely check that out and uh, and you'll hear quality like you. I mean, you'll be astonished when you hear the quality. But uh, next slide, please, Tom. Yeah, there we go. And uh, this, is, uh, this is another uh, short film that we're working on. Um, and if you need to work in small quarters, sound mount can't get in there, and you know, you're only recording uh, high quality ambient, that you can shoot that on a video mic without any worry at all. Uh, so we're filming inside the car. We had two actors in the, in the, in the front two seats and uh, recording the dialogue and so on. There just wasn't physically enough space to get the Sandman in there, although we were working with the Sandman, uh, who is actually shown in the next slide. Uh, Tom, please. So you can see he's in a background uh, with a boom pole. That's my NTG3 that has got uh, position there. And, uh, you know, if you can work with the Sandman, if it's the kind of thing where you can either find someone who wants to collaborate with you or there's budget, definitely fork out for a sound man. It makes life so much easier. And they can just concentrate on audio whilst you concentrate on visuals and action. Sure. Uh, and it and becomes a very, very good collaborative thing. Uh, but if you don't have the budget, then you end up looking like me in the next slide, uh, Tom, please. Yeah. It's uh, slightly like a, 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 a sort of a pack mule. So uh, I was actually covering a wedding in, uh, in that shot. And also the next one as well, uh, Please, Tom. So um, 
I've got a multimedia bag around me. It's a think tank photo bag. Um, I've got the you know various lenses and bits and pieces in there. But what I, what you can see in my hand is is a 5D Mark II with a Zukuto rig, which makes sort of holding the camera much much easier. Uh, it's easier to hold it steady. Um, got the NTG3 at the top, and that's going uh, and recording into an audio recorder. So this is already I've now taken it a step past. So from recording on camera, I've started to use uh, audio recorders from, from this stage onwards. And so it's taking the, 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 the audio from the microphone into the audio recorder, and then from the audio recorder, I'm splitting it, splitting an output into two, and one goes to headphones, so I can monitor what I'm, okay. what I'm recording, yeah. and the other goes into the camera. So it's recording a track onto the camera, which is firstly a good safety, and secondly, it's, it's necessary for synchronizing. Sure. the external audio, and uh, it's recording higher quality audio into an audio recorder. Um, there I was using a Zoom H4n, and uh, now I've sort of moved up to this, which is a Roland um, R26, which has got built-in microphones, but crucially, again, it's got, a, it's got uh, twin XLR inputs, yeah, sure. uh, which means I can plug in high quality, uh, the high-quality NTG3, um, and also other things like a Lavalier, which we'll talk about later on. Yeah. Um, can we have the next one, uh, please, Tom? So, bit of a bit of a sterile environment uh, in the next one. I was actually filming in an operating theatre. Uh, I worked on a on a sort of a long term uh, sort of documentary fundraising kind of film uh, for a hospital called the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital, uh, RNOH for short. And again, you can find this uh, film on my on my Vimeo channel. And uh, we're doing some some filming in an operating theater, and, and the camera I've got in my hand has got a video mic pro on it, and the camera in the foreground on a tripod has got uh, the video mic on it. And uh, again, you know, great audio, great ambient sound, uh, made it straight into the edited film afterwards. Uh, can we have the next one, please, Tom? Uh, Prince Andrew was was the patron of RNOH. Uh, he's since passed it over to his daughter, uh, Her Royal Highness Princess Eugenie. Um, but in this shot, I'm just setting the shot up. He's literally just sat down for a one-on-one -on -one interview. And uh, sound-wise, I'm recording audio on on both DSLRs. One's got a video mic on it. One's got a video mic pro on it. Uh, the reason for this is that it acts as a backup. It means that I've got audio on both cameras, sure. uh, which are pretty good. <clears throat> but it's also uh, necessary to allow me to synchronize the external audio, which I'm recording onto a Zoom H4n using the NTG3 that you can see in the middle of the picture on a microphone stand. Yeah. Uh, and I use something called Pluralize, which is a great piece of software. And you just throw the audio in, you throw the, the, the video clips in, and very quickly it synchronizes everything perfectly then you can go on and edit it. Um, so uh, in the shot, I'm just leveling the microphones, uh, sorry, the cameras. And uh, what I did after this was raise the microphone and bring it a lot closer. So it's just below kind of chest height, obviously out of picture. Um, and it gave fantastic audio. Uh, the next slide, please, Tom. So uh, this is, again, part of the same shoot. This is uh, Princess Eugenie. And again, we're sort of just setting up uh, pre-shooting. You can see the cameras with the microphones on them. Um, can we move on to the next one? OK. Still part of the, the hospital shoot. Um, this is a different day. Uh, we're, we're, we're shooting in a children's ward. Um, and you know, sort of get, get even better audio. I've got my assistant, Nicola, there. Uh, with a boom pole, the it's it's the Rode Mini Boom, uh, which I've found perfect because it's it's just the right height for for every length for everything I I need. Um, got the NTG3 on there, and she's recording onto the to the Zoom sort of for better audio. And but again, as you can see, I've always got a microphone on my DSLR. I never use the built-in microphones. Yeah. Uh, the better the audio is, it means I can synchronize much more accurately or pluralize can plural eyes can synchronize much more accurately. And also, if there was a problem with, with the, the Zoom, the batteries ran out or the card corrupted or something, I know I've got a, a good enough audio from the DSLR that I can then sort of adjust sure. a little bit, get rid of some of the hiss and, uh, and use. Can we move on, please, to the next slide, please? 
And uh, this, again, is part of the hospital project. Uh, it gives you a slightly closer look at the cameras. We're just setting up for an interview. And the next one again, please. And again, you can see the microphone stand, NTG3, getting it ready. For anyone with a photographic background, recording externally means you can record in, in a better format, which is a, in this case, it's a WAV format. And it's like comparing a JPEG to a raw picture. You get much better sound if you record it as, as a WAV, as opposed to a compressed file within the video, which is being compressed often as to H.264 or AVCHD, depending on which make of camera you use. Uh, and the next one, please, Tom. Okay. So uh, this is uh, the camera setup that I used for a short film I shot in January called LA Diary, the link of which I've, I've posted, uh, posted in the chat room. Uh, so this is with, a, with an Olympus uh, OMD EM1 and uh, Video Mic Pro is on top of it. I've, I've got it on a Rycote shock mount, uh, which is the sort of bits you can see on the side. Uh, and to the left of the cameras you're viewing, you've got the Roland R26 recording the audio. And uh, the last slide, please, Tom. Yeah. Actually, I've, I've, I've got, got it here as well. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's the same camera, but with the Rode Video Mic Go, which is just perfect for, for these smaller cameras. It's a slightly smaller unit, smaller sort of shock mount and everything. Doesn't need a battery, so there's no danger that you're going to forget to switch it on which has happened twice before in my career, I have, to, uh, I have to admit. And it sounds great. You know, if you want ultimate sound for an on-camera microphone, definitely the Video Mic Pro is the way to go. But this uh, is surprisingly good sounding. So um, this is what, uh, what I was using, uh, what I'll be using on, on the Micro Four Thirds cameras, like the EM1 uh, from now on. Um, Jonathan, how about we uh, we talk about lavaliers and uh, stereo mics and stuff like that? Abs absolutely. I think probably the natural follow-on is, is maybe the same group of microphones. Um, and, and thanks for the pictures. It really illustrates how, how user-friendly they are in, in, in that environment. Um, so when we do uh, trade shows and, and things like that, and we're speaking to people maybe who are just getting into audio, their natural assumption is that a stereo microphone is going to be better than a mono microphone. Um, that's not necessarily the case at all. So all the microphones we've done so far are shotgun microphones and they're specifically aimed at where the camera is pointing or if they're separated from the camera where you're physically pointing that microphone. Um, the, the other range of microphones is stereo microphones and these work in a, in a slightly different way. So instead of a single microphone pointing forward it's actually uh, two microphones crossed over like that so it's picking up a whole field of what's in front of the microphone. Now, um, again, we'll come back to Edmund in a moment for, for real life examples, but um, this is the, the stereo video mic. Uh, this was the first stereo video mic that uh, Rode did. Um, so again, it's on a shock mount. Um, you've got the same kind of controls at the back there. You've got an on-off switch, you've got a high-pass filter, and you've got a pad just in case anything gets too loud and you need to knock it down. Um, where I see the, the microphones being really useful is this maybe if the, the camera is in a, a stationary position and you're trying to capture a whole, maybe an atmosphere of uh, you know, a street scene or something like that. Maybe there's a performance that is, is happening and you want to capture the whole width of the sound. Um, and basically with a mono microphone, it's not the fact that the sound just goes to one side of a left or a right. It, the same sound goes to both. And a stereo microphone, if something is happening on the left in front of the microphone, you're going to hear that on the left-hand side in either your speakers or your, your monitoring headphones. And if it's on the right, it's going to be on the right-hand side. So it gives you a much, much fuller image, but in, a, in a, maybe an interview scene, that's not what you want. So you want to be focused on the, on the person you're speaking to, not on everything else maybe on the street of the buses and the traffic noise. So um, it's not the fact that the stereo is better or worse, it's just a different environment to which you use the stereo microphones.